My name is Jeremy Hill. I'm a second year pharmacy administrator resident in the Health System Pharmacy Administration Program at the University of Wisconsin Health. When I think about pharmacy administration, I think about the team of leaders and managers uh, on the pharmacy team that sets the vision for the department and then works with frontline staff to get their buy-in and their support for that division and sets key initiatives to make it a reality, to achieve better patient outcomes, to be financially responsible, and to overall help the organization meet their goals. So as far as choosing pharmacy administration for me personally, I wish I could tell you there was a, a moment in time where I knew this is what I wanted to do, but it was really a slow progression. During my second year of pharmacy school, you know, I was really focused in on the clinical aspects of pharmacy. I even thought I may want to go back to medical school to be a cardiologist. Um, when I came to the realization I didn't really want to go back to school for and train for 10 more years, I started looking at the different programs. And I was involved with a lot of the leadership organizations, or a lot of the organizations in the pharmacy school, and I held leadership roles in most of them. And I started to realize that long term I wanted to be in a leadership role to help set the vision not only for the pharmacy department in my organization, but really even the profession in general. I started looking around about what I thought was the best path to take. I've always work, loved working with a team and loved leading people. I had a really good friend who was in a pharmacy administrative program. I had a conversation with him and started looking around and um, quickly realized it was a program for me. So that's what kind of started my path down this route. So there's a lot of differences between administrative residencies versus uh, pharmacy practice residencies. One of the things that sticks out is the personnel management. So as an administrative resident, I'm much more involved in, in personnel management throughout our entire department. Another big difference is project management. So I, I have the ability and am able to lead major projects across our entire department. Um, that's something else that's really unique to these programs. The other big thing is exposure. Um, I'm, able to get, I'm able to gain exposure throughout our entire department with all of our key initiatives. And then there's also elements of finance, where I have exposure to the finances of the de Department of Pharmacy and how that works, um, as well as exposure to senior leadership and how the interaction is with the pharmacy department versus the actual whole health system. Uh, so those are some of the key differences uh, that I see between a pharmacy administration program and a uh, clinical practice program. So to give you an idea of the tasks and responsibilities that I have as a pharmacy administrative resident. During the first year, and think about rotations, I have four clinical rotations. For example, I completed surgery, an OR rotation, a cardiology rotation, and an infectious disease rotation. Some of my other rotations included eight, spending eight weeks uh, in inpatient operations, focusing in on the distribution systems and the technology that we use to get medications to the patients. I spent another eight weeks focusing in on pharmacy informatics and how we use our EHR, as well as data management, and how we manage the data that we use to drive how we complete our work. Um, I also spent eight weeks in clinical management, so I had the privilege of managing our cardiology team and really focusing in on the human resources aspect of the job. And then finally, I spent eight weeks in drug policy. Drug policy rotation looking at how we put together protocols, guidelines and, assist, and assisted our team in developing those. Some of the longitudinal rotations I was involved in includes medication safety, medication utilization evaluations or MUEs, and then also I had a rotation as a residency program director where I helped with the onboarding process of the first year administrative residents coming in. Some other experiences included my PGY-1 project um, that I had the entire year, also TA for a drug literature class in the School of Pharmacy for the P2s. I cover a 24-hour sick call pager for our pharmacy technicians, and we have about 130 FTE worth of pharmacy technician, or full-time equivalent. Um, I staff 16 hours a week, and that staffing is all decentral, so it's clinical staffing. So to give you an example, the first six weeks, or sorry, six months of the program, I staffed in surgery. Um, the second six months of the program, I sta staffed in both the cardiology and cardiothoracic um, ICU as well. There's also, I was also during this time a full-time student, and here in a minute I'll give you a kind of a run-through of some of my classes. Now moving on to the second year, I had another eight weeks in advanced operations. So this rotation really built on that first year rotation of inpatient operations, 
and gave me the ability to really dive deep into what we do from an operations standpoint at the hospital. Next, I had the opportunity to spend eight weeks with our director of pharmacy, Steve Rao, really learning how to manage up to senior leadership and how to manage or oversee an entire department of pharmacy. I was able to get involved with so many different projects during this rotation that really affected not only our department, but the whole organization. Next, I was able to spend eight weeks on supply chain and specialty pharmacy, focusing in on, you know, we, we have a huge drug budget, and I think we're budgeting next year for about $270 million. So how do we focus in on supply chain and make sure we're getting medications in the, in the door, uh, dealing with shortages, and also getting the best price we can for the medication? Also, I'm sure you've heard a lot about specialty pharmacy. Specialty pharmacy is one of the, the big topics in pharmacy now. But I had to spend some time with, with Andy Pobelmacher uh, for four weeks of that eight weeks rotation, focusing in on some of the strategies we use in specialty pharmacy and learning more about specialty pharmacy. Next, I spent eight weeks on the ambulatory um, side, so ambulatory leadership and revenue cycle. I was able to gain a better understanding of how we manage our 12 retail pharmacies. I was also able to look into to, um, how, we, how we monitor the workload at each of those pharmacies and look in and dig into the revenue cycle for each pharmacy and how we monitor that month to month. Also had an eight week rotation with our chief operating officer for the entire um, health system. So spending time with, with Tim was a great experience. I've been able to uh, sit in on some of the high level meetings of the organization and gain a better understanding of, of how, how things work at the, uh, the C-suite level. Next, I had some longitudinal rotations second year as well. That included a transitions of care rotation as well as a pharmacy research center. So obviously as an academic medical center, one of our major missions is research. Um, and we have over 300 clinical trials open that the pharmacy department supports. So learning the operations behind the research center uh, was, was a huge opportunity and a great, great part of the program. Some other experiences include a master's project. So during the first year and going into the second year, I have about 18 months to complete a, a master's project. Um, my, my master's project was looking at inventory management across our entire health system. So that was a focus of mine. Your staffing during, for our program it goes from 16 hours the first year down to eight hours the second year. And that staffing is all in operation. So central staffing, uh, both in our sterile products area as well as in our unit dose distribution area. I'm also still in the second year a full-time student uh, and there's many, many more experiences as well. Now thinking about the class, um, the, my classwork. So I told you a little bit about my rotations but I also wanted to focus in on the classwork. The way I like to break it down is that there's three sections. So the first section is classes focusing on industrial engineering and process improvement. So if you think about pharmacy, um, there's a lot of processes going on. The process of getting the medication to the floor, the process of how we take care of the patients and direct patient care. So having classes focusing on process improvement and how to evaluate processes, come up with visions for future processes and actually implement the change was a huge advantage. The second section I like to break it down into is, is HR um, and business management. So one class I took, for example, was managerial accounting. So really understanding the accounting and finances is huge for a pharmacy department, especially with the much drug expenses we have. I also took several classes in human resources management. So if you're, if you're getting into administration, there's always going to be the people component. So learning how to manage uh, people is a huge element of administration. So those classes have proven to be very, very valuable um, in learning how to manage individuals. And then finally, the third element is really focused on pharmacy and leadership. We have a seminar class where we bring in leaders from around that organization to talk to us about their path to where they are today and some of the leadership skills that they found most valuable. We also have a health system data and analytics class. So we actually focus in on building a database and how data is managed in a healthcare setting. Some other experiences that I think are really important to highlight, um, some of these are particular to, to myself and some of them all my co-residents are involved in as well. Each month I, I provide the variance reporting for our oncology budget, quite a large budget, so I, I had that great financial experience. I'm also leading a 340B project, and many of you may not know exactly what 340B is, 
but it's a substantial project for not only our Department of Pharmacy, but really the entire organization. It's a multidisciplinary team that consists of social workers, nursing, finance, legal, and outside consultants. It's a really that interdisciplinary team, and it's been a wonderful experience. As I mentioned earlier, I've had the opportunity to build a, a database that's helped us with medication synchronization and our outpatient pharmacies. I also have been collaborating with residents from around the state of Wisconsin on, on key initiatives for the state. When I think about the difference between management and leadership, I usually think of management as more as a task focus, looking at the details, um, making sure processes are set up correctly. When I think of leadership, it's more global. Um, it's getting people motivated, setting a vision, uh, and thinking through how you're going to get from point A to point B to accomplish that vision. So in terms of clinical pharmacy management, there's definitely different areas that I'm able to be involved in in my residency program. From personnel management, to team leadership, to program development, and strategic planning. To give you an example of each, thinking about personnel management. So I spent eight weeks on a clinical management rotation. Uh, for me personally, I, I was able to manage the cardiology team. So I was able to get involved in the team meetings, lead the team meetings, take minutes for the team, and interact with providers to help on key initiatives in cardiology. For the team leadership, as I described, I was able to, to lead the team and really facilitate any discussions that we needed to have. And I was really the key contact for the team. So during that eight weeks, they really were contacting me with questions and issues instead of contacting their normal manager. For program development, I think a, a great example is my PGY1 project. So I was able to implement a new program for pharmacists monitoring patients going home on IV antimicrobials. So at baseline, we didn't manage any patient who left the hospital and on IV antimicrobials. I was able to implement a new system, a transitions of care system within our electronic medical record to allow our inpatient pharmacist to signal our clinic pharmacist in the infectious disease clinic to start monitoring those patients through their entire course of therapy. Right now we're collecting results on that, but it's a great example of being given the opportunity to develop a new clinical program. And finally, strategic planning. So my co-residents and I are involved and setting the strategic plan for the entire department. So we're developing a strategic retreat, we're coming up with a, a survey to ask various members of the department for their input, and then we're all gonna come together at the retreat and decide on key initiatives for the next three to five years. I'll then be responsible with my co-residents for writing that strategic plan and presenting it to the Department of Pharmacy for buy-in. So a great opportunity as an administrative resident to really set the vision uh, for the department for the next three to five years. Pharmacy administrators advance pharmacy practice, clinical practice in so many different ways. You know, I really view the position as an enabler. So if a frontline staff member or if, you know, I'm reading in the literature and there's these great new clinical programs that, are, that pharmacists are being involved in or leading, you know, it's my job to figure out a way to resource that and implement the change and implement the program to advance pharmacy practice at my institution. Some of the challenges I see facing pharmacy. First is population health. So how do pharmacists become involved in, in the population health movement that's happening around the country? And how do we deploy pharmacy resources to make sure we're providing val the most value, value we can? Second is reducing medication costs. So I think we've all seen the price of medication soar over the last couple of years. So how are we able to reduce that cost while, while maintaining safety and quality for our patients? Another is expanding the role of pharmacists and gaining resources to do that. So how do we figure out ways to involve pharmacists in new clinical services and justify gaining those resources? And then four is a layered learning model and really just a practice model in general. So how do we involve students, involve residents um, in, in that model and how, how do we make that model work both inpatient and outpatient? So those are some of the key challenges that I see um, facing pharmacy. I think the future of pharmacy administration looks great. Um, you know, you always need someone helping to lead the profession, lead the organization, and find new innovative ways for pharmacists to be involved. Uh, some of the new directions that I see on the horizon are is population health. 
So really figuring out how our pharmacists can be involved in population health. Something else is, is clinic practice. So how do we continue to move pharmacists into the ambulatory clinics? Um, how do we continue to get them involved, seeing those patients in clinic and helping with those population health initiatives? Finally, something else that we, we probably all heard about is especially pharmacy. It's, it's growing. These are very expensive drugs uh, in very unique disease states. Uh, so getting pharmacists involved in the management of those medication, uh, medications is going to be key to the future as well. So what can students do to prepare for a pharmacy administration residency? I wish I could give you a checklist, but there really isn't one. I think one thing you can do is shadow people in the profession that are in leadership and management roles. Um, spending time with them and understanding what their day-to-day -day looks like. Obviously during your fourth year you can set up a rotation with them as well, which would be very valuable. Some other things, be involved in organizations. Uh, take on leadership roles. Roles. If there's projects in those organizations, help lead those projects. Uh, during your, your fourth year, if there's other projects that you can become involved in and lead on rotations, do that. Really, that project management and change management is a huge component and a huge skill that will help you along the way. Other things, it never hurts to take business classes that may be available, uh, either in the pharmacy school or outside the pharmacy school. Having that financial savvy is going to really help you along the way. Other than that, just make sure you're, you're learning to be a pharmacist. Um, being a pharmacist is step one, so make sure that you're focusing on those clinical classes and preparing yourself for life after school.